Uh, let me just say, it's really uh, an honor for me to be here with you today. Why I'm here with you today is because I am here. 1968 was a very revolutionary year. Many of the young individuals I see here today, I re recall seeing the same eyes back in 1968. They tried to say our movement was a black power movement. Our movement was a human race movement. Yeah. For many years, they tried to dictate to you and others that you know, we just concerned about black people. We was concerned about the economics of all people. Yeah. The same fight that I had in 1968, we have the same fight taking place today. Yeah. As you know, in the political world right now, we have a black man in the White House. This man didn't take the office to say, I'm here as the president of black people. I'm the president of all people. But we have a lot of right wingers there in the Congress. It states that no matter what this man tries to do to help those blue collar workers that made this country as great as it is, he's trying to be stopped. They're trying to stop every move that he makes. It's very difficult for him to do the process unless you guys start to swell. When I say swell, I'm talking about swell in numbers. You have to be persuasive. You have to show individuals your courage and help them to resurrect their courage to step out here with you. The more numbers we have, the more mountains we will be able to move. The fat cats right now, America is depressed economically. The fat cats are still putting millions upon millions, billions upon billions, trillions uh, upon trillions of dollars in the bank. Right now, today, as we sit here trying to figure out when are they going to move. They're going to move because you're not going to dissipate. You're not going anywhere. They're hoping that right now, the fact it is that this is the winter months coming in, it's going to get cold, it's going to get wet, it's going to get snowy, and we're going to break down and go home. It's your fight to let them know that I'm not partially committed. I am totally committed. There's no partial pregnancy. Either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. Are you in the fight or you're not in the fight? Now across this country, I stop at all the takeovers. Like we took over Wall Street, Occupy Chicago, Occupy, uh, where did we go yesterday, David? Wisconsin, right. I mean, Wisconsin. I'd have been so many places, forgive me, because I don't remember them all. But what I'm saying is, with this occupation that we're doing, I've seen people walk by, like I see people walking by here, and they're checking you out. They're checking out your resolve, they're checking out your faith, they're checking out your courage. And most of all, when I look in their eyes, I see the same look in their eyes that you guys have in your eyes. In terms of, well, I'm going to have like, this job that I have tomorrow. Whether my child is going to be able to get a job with all the money I spent on education. My kid doesn't have a job, but yet and still they're constantly sending, sending that money back, student loan. I'm wondering whether my baby girl and my baby son is going to be able to go to college based on the fact that the price of education is going up. Many individual kids that's out here and all across this country, all of them are not poor. All of them didn't have hard economic, hard economic times when they were coming up. Their parents were very wealthy. But yet and still, with the wealth that they have, they had to find a way to tell mom and dad, we appreciate the fact that you took care of us, but we're dissatisfied the fact that you didn't spread the gravy for everybody. That's why they're here. 1968 was a very tragic year in many ways. Many people lost their lives in the Vietnam War. Just like we sit back right now and say we can't pay our bills because we in wars that we have no business in today. This is why this country is going down. The president is trying to bring the troops home and the Congress is trying to keep them there. As you see what happened in Libya, they're still trying to create wars now for us to send more of our kids again. It's the eyes and the strength and the vision of you individuals that's going to put these things to a halt. When you sit back and think about one individual can be brilliant. Five individuals can be better. But if one individual step out and decide, I can change this society by moving this pebble, he can't move the pebble by himself. 
But when those individuals come together as a unit, a unified unit, you become a very powerful force. That's what they tried to say with the Black Power Movement. It was a unified movement. As you are coming together now in terms of this unified movement, rest assured, you can not only move that pebble, but you can move a mountain. Why is it necessary to move a mountain? Not merely for you. But this mountain we're trying to move is for your kids and your kids' kids. It's not about the world that you live in today. If you sit back and think about when I was a little boy, I could look up and see the sky. Today you can hardly see the sky. You don't know whether the sky is small. Today you can go to the park and sit back and say, man, I got to worry about whether I'm going to be mugged in the park because we, nobody's running the park anymore. Everybody got laid off. If they're laid off and you have your kids, how are you going to protect your kids in the park when nobody's in the park but gangs roaming the streets? Merely because they don't have a concern for your needs. These police around here that's out here safeguarding the mayor, the governor, take into account this also, that the police are just like you with one exception. The exception is that they have a mandate when they took the job. They took an oath to protect whatever the governor wants or whatever the city wants. But remember also in 1968, we studied. We didn't just act, we studied the game rules. We didn't let them set us up to take us to jail because we studied the game rules before they studied the rules. If you go to jail, a lot of times you're going to go because you didn't study the program. And when you don't study the program, they're waiting to take you to jail. But once again, those same police that take you to jail, their mortgage is on the edge also. Their kids are not being able to go to college also. They're worried about whether their job is going to be there tomorrow also. So as they caught it in Catch-22, rest assured that they have some kind of compassion for what you're doing here. It's just that mandate make them have to step back and keep their mouth shut. But the same as you bleed, they bleed. Once again, unification is the strongest weapon that we have, is numbers. God bless you and spread the word. Yeah. Thanks, John. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time for discussion.